fighting is actually you put yourself in a kind of zone with your opponent where actually nothing else exists. Movements, they seem to be from the outside very quick, seemed for you a little bit slower. The time is different. The Western method and the, I would say, the Oriental method gives a different kind of approach. When you combine these two things, you can develop a body machine which is very extraordinary. Your physical condition needs to be prepared, okay? Your skill set needs to be prepared. And the mental, the mental is the most important one because if you think that you are very good and you have the disbalance of your techniques and skill set and condition, then you will be always in the losing part. Okay, but if you think you're very good and you train smart and hard, then your mental preparedness will be totally in a different zone. Because fighting is actually, you put yourself in a kind of zone with your opponent, where actually nothing else exists. Two persons are in a kind of zone. If you're a fighter, you will understand what I mean. You can focus on that person. Movements, they seem to be, from the outside, very quick, seemed for you a little bit slower. The time is different. The time changes when you fight with somebody. Everything changes. Your vision changes. I can fight with my opponent, but the surrounding of 360 degrees, I'm also aware of that because everything is spot on. All the senses are activated. And when you train the combination of Western conditioning training, I would say, I mean the, the, the heart rate conditioning, the anaerobic training, what you need as a fighter. Yeah? You need to train aerobic training and anaerobe. Yeah? That is very important that because you have the recovery time in uh, maybe 40 second rest time when you, between the fights. But the Western method and the, I would say the Oriental method gives a different kind of approach. When you combine these two things, you can develop a body machine which is very extraordinary. And when you know the correct method, how to train in a certain way where you, your body can be created as a fighting machine with all the body armor, 
with the iron arm, the iron fist, the golden bell, the hardened shin bone, the iron, we call all these kind of things iron, 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 except the golden bell. Yeah? Uh, that gives you a kind of safety feeling. It gives you the sure, the, uh, it will ensure you nobody can harm me. I'm protected. I'm well prepared. Then the mind training, what we are doing in different kind of standing positions where we're exercising our mind. You remember we have one tutorial which called the Grand Circle. Mm -hmm. That kind of ready, readiness and preparedness which all the exercises gives you, it will open all the senses in your body. You will feel a special kind of radiance which emerge from your body when you learn and when you practice these standing exercises in combination with the philosophy and the knowledge of how energy works in the Chinese way, because the Chinese yeah. way explains yeah. things differently than the Indian way. Yeah, I feel like this, you know, the standing practices which are kind of more on the internal side, but they are still very practical even towards the, the fighting. It's not as direct, you know, you don't do the fighting stuff, but the certain attributes that it develops, like the stability of the legs, the strength of the body, and this type of endurance, I've never seen these methods in the Western style. It's a completely different method because, of course, you could do the Western style strength and conditioning, so why should you do the other? But it's so different in the traditional martial arts and Kung Fu styles that what I ever experienced before. And it's a kind of endurance in the legs, for example, that I noticed immediately in like doing sparring and martial arts or actually like kickboxing, Thai boxing and stuff like that to have this kind of endurance in the legs. So it's not that you need to choose one or the other, but the traditional martial arts, I feel like it helps to refine whatever skills you're trying to develop even they might be very traditional boxing skills. If you have that sort of structure and frame that you develop with these standing practices, it helps tremendously with the kind of rooting and even body mechanics you can learn with this. I think many people who are practicing just regular boxing, kickboxing, and they're not getting forward in it, is the, re the reason is that they don't have these certain attributes developed in their body to a level where they could then jump onto the next level. So they really help with this kind of underlying thing and make, can make your progress much faster. That's what I really feel about, or I have noticed it actually. So as long as you physically is on top, you need to be also prepared and you need to be very alert. What and how is your mentally conditioned? How is it? Is it prepared for you too? Are you prepared for a fight? Yeah. So that is very crucial in today's society because uh, uh, nobody actually, when you have a goal, uh, should hold you down or slow you down. That is very important. So you can be the best of the best if here in your private life it's not in order. Then yeah, I can like, then you can't, you feel like, you can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah. Qi, Qigong and Kung Fu can also help with the mental, uh, I suppose, the aspect as well. Like you explained, the standing meditation, everything can make you more focused, clear. After I get divorced, I went very deep into that kind of what we call monk mode, okay? Where you can, where you can prepare yourself to recover your self-consciousness, your mind, with different kind of exercise where you can calm your mind, where you, what we call that, we call that the conscious mind and the emotional, emotional mind, which is residing in the heart, where we can put these things together, standing practices, qigong exercises for, at first, 30 days, which needs an abstinent lifestyle. That means you have no sexual intercourse. You have a regularly life. You sleep in a normal pattern way. It means you sleep early and you wake up early. You do your training. You don't have any disturbance in your mental mind from the outside 
okay, that everything is in harmony. You have the best condition to train for that. Because if that is clear, your conscious mind is clear, you can develop a, you can develop a tremendous amount of motivation, iron will, and when you put that into a training, for example, like Qigong or Neigong, and you can, you can focus during the 30-day circle or during the 100-day circle to reach your goal, to develop yourself, uh, to become a stronger person. Male or female, it doesn't matter. In my case, I was choosing goals to achieve. I lost once, I get KO'd, and I KO'd others in my life. That is an experience. But as older you get, you want to set up goals for a higher one. You want to be the real, the real martial artist. The real one which always emphasize applicable martial art. Which emphasize also for myself. I practice Tai Chi, I practice Bhagwan Zhang. That is beautiful, that is nice, but that is also very dangerous. Because you can drift away into a fantasy world where you think you're good, you're un, uh, undefeatable, nobody can come closer to you, but actually it's a totally different case. You th mentally think you're tough, you're good, you developed all these kind of martial skills, no? what Bhagwat Zhang, Qigong, Tai Chi, whatever, provide. But actually, uh, six, uh, I will say, a person who practices six to one year kickboxing will wipe you away in the first two minutes. Because thinking to be good and actually train as a fighter is a totally different thing. 